unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably noticed by now that some things float while other things sink. And if you're anything like me, you've asked yourself the question, BUT WHY? Now, when I ask people, why do you think things sink? The first answer that I get is, BECAUSE THEY'RE HEAVY! But we know that that can't be the case, because wood will float no matter how much of it you have, and metal will sink no matter how much of it you have. Even if I cut down this enormous tree, if I brought it to the ocean and threw it in the water, it would still float. So what really is going on here? Well, I'm George, I'm here in sunny Marina del Rey, and I'm about to tell you. If you were to fill a bin to the brim with water and then drop a brick into it, the water level would rise and spill over the sides. This is because both the brick and the water take up space. And since they can't take up the same space at once, the water needs to move out of the way of the brick in order to let it in. This concept is called displacement. And in fact, the volume of the brick is equal to the volume of the water that spills out over the sides. But George, how does that help us answer the question? Right, so in ancient Greece, a big brain scientist named Archimedes started taking measurements and he found something interesting. To this day, his discovery is still referred to as Archimedes' principle. He discovered that if the mass of the object you put into the water is greater than the mass of the water displaced, then the object will sink. But if the mass is less, then the object will float. You can think about this like a battle between the object that you put into the water and the water that it displaces. Since they both can't take up the same space, they try to push each other away. And the one that wins is the one with more mass. For example, this block of wood has less mass than the water it displaces. So water wins the battle and pushes the wood out, and so the wood floats. This block of steel, on the other hand, is a different story. Since its mass is much greater than the water it displaces, it successfully pushes the water out of the way and takes the space for itself, and so the steel sinks. So then, the question of floating or sinking becomes one of density and not weight. Density is a measure of something's mass divided by its volume. That is, the amount of matter packed into something divided by the amount of space it takes up. This block of wood and this block of aluminum weigh the same exact amount, which means they have equal masses. But you can see that the aluminum block has a much smaller volume than the wooden block. Because it has the same mass, but takes up less space, this means that its density is much higher than that of the wooden block. Metals like aluminum and steel tend to be very dense, which means they tend to be more massive than the mass of the water that they displace. This is why they tend to sink in water, while substances like wood tend to float. And since density is a characteristic property, this will be true no matter how much of the substance you have. But George, so many of these boats are made of steel and aluminum, and they float. You're absolutely right, and they do this by taking advantage of Archimedes' principle. To make a successful boat, you can take a dense material like aluminum and mold it into the shape of a hollow container. By doing so, you're increasing the overall volume that the aluminum displaces when placed in water, without increasing the mass of the aluminum itself. So, if you apply this to engineering, there really is no limit on how heavy a boat can be. You can build an absolutely massive fuel tanker or freighter, and it would still float as long as you follow the one main principle we've learned about today. That the boat's mass must be less than the mass of the water it displaces. Now you know why some things float and other things sink, and if anyone asks you how you learned, you can just say, George told me. <laughs>